let's learn how to use the face expression controller to have our 3D model match the expressions of the user. So before we prepare our 3D model, let's take a look at the Lens Studio face expressions um, template uh, reference here to kind of see what we need to set up. So I'm just gonna scroll down and there's a little tutorial we can watch, uh, but let's first take a look at what we need to do to set up our facial expressions. So there are 51 expressions total and you don't need to set up all of them depending on your mesh and how kind of nuanced you want the motion to be. There is a full list on their API page. So we take a quick look and we have an eye blink left, eye blink right, eye squint left, eye squint right, et cetera, et cetera. And then some motion for the eyebrows, for the jaw, and then the mouth. So you can kind of look through this list, see what each thing does and decide if it's relevant for your model or if you want to do it. Uh, 51 blend shapes are a bit to set up, uh, but you can get away with just doing a subset of these to make um, your setup work a lot simpler. Now, there is a very important note here. So these blend shapes are different and unique for every face, and there's no guarantee that it ever reaches zero or one. So this is often seen with the blinking. So an eye blink left value of zero means your eyes open. If it's one, it means that the eyes close when blinking. However, we don't always get to the value of zero. And when the eyes closed, we don't always get to one. It might just be at 0.7 or 0.8. And so that's just something to keep in mind when designing your blend shapes. Don't count on anyone ever getting to zero or one with any of these blend shapes. Uh, there's a margin of error. And if it doesn't look quite perfect, um, Lens users are very forgiving and usually don't even care. All right, so I am here in Blender. Uh, feel free to use any program you wish. Um, this is just what I use. And so I'm going to briefly show you how to set it up. This is not a Blender tutorial. I'm not a Blender expert. So if you get stuck on any of the Blender stuff, uh, please don't ask me. Uh, please look up a Blender specific tutorial or ask on a forum um, or do the same for whatever software you're using. Now, a very common pitfall I see is someone will have a subdivision surface modifier. Uh, so let's just add that really quick. So this just helps make uh, the surfaces even smoother. So here it is on. If I turn off, you can see that kind of the edges get a little more jagged. If I turn on, it smooths things out. Now, Blender cannot export the shape keys if you have a subdivision surface modifier. Um, but you can still add them. You can use them inside Blender but you cannot export them to an FBX file if you have this modifier. So before you do any work, please, please, please apply your subdivision surface modifier. Now, this model didn't have one. Um, I didn't make this one, I got it, but it did have this multi-res modifier. So before I make my blend shapes, I'm also going to apply this because it does some subdivision and I'm not sure if it would interfere. So if you do have any modifiers and you want to keep them and not apply them, do a really quick test, set up one shape key export, and see if it works in Lens Studio. If it does, then feel free to keep your modifiers. If it doesn't, make sure you get your modifiers applied so that you don't go through all that setup work just to have to start over because you also cannot apply a subdivision surface modifier if you have all those shape keys set up. Okay, so enough about that, let's get to work. So my mesh, I want to make sure my triangle count is okay. So I'm at 20,000 triangles. Now Lens Studio recommends no more than 60,000. Um, you can go up to 100,000 and you should be okay. And you can even go up higher than that, but try to keep it as low as reasonably possible. And then make sure that your mesh uh, right now is exactly how you want it to be as if it was in a rest position. So you just want the eyes open, you want the mouth closed. Um, because we're gonna use this as our basis. So I like the way my mesh looks. So I'm going to apply this multi-res just because I don't need it. And I'm going to come over here. I'm going to create my first shape key. This is just called the basis. And this is kind of the root of um, how all my shape keys are going to be derived from. So let's come back to our list. And um, with my model, it's a skull, so I'm not gonna really need the eye blink left, right. I wanna skip the squinting. Uh, so I'm gonna just scroll down and um, I'll probably do the browse up. So we have browse up center, browse up left, and browse up right. Now, if we name our shape keys these exact things, it's gonna make our life a lot easier once we get into Lens Studio. 
So I want to remember browse up center, browse up left, uh, capitalize the first letter of each words, no spaces. All right, so back to Blender and let's create our first shape key. So I'm just gonna add that. I'm gonna double click, browse up center. And now with the shape key selected, I'm gonna hit tab or you can go into sculpt mode and let's just create our shape key. So this doesn't need to be exact. So I'm just gonna select a few the vertices here in the middle. I'm going to turn on proportional editing with O. I'm gonna grab Z and I'll just kind of lift this up um, like that. And I should probably have put that weight to one. So I'm gonna tab out. And now if I go up to one, you can see my brows going up. I come down to zero, you can see them going back down to that basis. Now, a little tip I found is you want to exaggerate this movement. So if this looks kind of realistic, uh, we actually want to come in, we want to exaggerate that even more, just to make it a little more readable once we're in the lens. So let's tab out. So applied, off, applied, off. So that's pretty exaggerated, but it's gonna look a much better in our lens. All right, so I'm going to turn that back down to zero. I'm going to create my next shape key. Browse up left and uh, same thing. So let's go ahead and give this a value of one. Let's come into edit mode. And uh, like I said, you can do this in sculpt mode. So let's just bring our left eyebrow up. So we tab out, we can kind of see how it's going. So there's browse up left. And so that looks pretty good. So now I'm just going to keep moving down the list and work on some of these eyebrows. Okay, so my eyebrows are more or less done. And if I turn them both on, see they don't quite match, they aren't quite symmetrical, but people aren't symmetrical, so that's okay. Uh, none of this needs to be perfect. I've never heard of anyone noticing that your shape keys aren't exactly the same on each side. All right, so um, eyebrows, I'm not gonna do the eyes. Um, so let's do some jaw stuff. So I don't think I wanna do jaw forward. Um, I am gonna do jaw open. So when someone opens their mouth, jaw open is probably the main one you want. There is a mouth open um, shape key. Uh, somewhere. Uh, well, I guess a mouth closed. This is your lips together, not your jaw. Uh, so your jaw open is the main like mouth open one that you're probably thinking of. So let's create that one. Jaw right, jaw left. I don't think I want to do that because it's just a bone. Uh, but I think I will do some of these uh, mouth ones. Uh, this is more like lip movements, these mouth ones. Uh, so smiling. Um, I've actually never seen the frowning shape keys activated in the studio. It may or may not be a bug. I might not be able to pick them up. So you can add them, but uh, in my experience, these haven't been working. Uh, but I think I'll do the smiling. Um, the upper lips, not too much, but I think I will do uh, the lips pucker, maybe the lips funnel, just get a little um, kind of emotion in the mouth. So now I'm gonna go through and kind of add some of these in.
Okay, so I have my bone shapes here. I've uh, kind of my eyebrow ones, the jaw open, some mouth stuff, and then I added these sneer ones to get some motion in the nose. Uh, so feel free to do as many of these bone shapes as you wish. I'm just gonna keep it simple for uh, this tutorial. So once I have that all done, I'm going to export this as an FBX file. So in Blender file, export uh, FBX. And once that's saved, let's head over to Lens Studio. I'm here in Lens Studio with a blank project and the face expressions, uh, if we look here, there's kind of the scripting interface for it, but we don't want to have to write the script. Uh, there's this built-in one for the face expressions um, template here. Uh, and so let's just use that to make our lives much easier. Now inside Lens Studio, if you come to the objects panel, uh, if we look inside the helper scripts, we have a tweet manager, behavior, makeup, and world object controller. Um, none of these are the face expressions controller. So we could click on get more scripts and that will open the asset library. So let's go ahead and search for, let's just say face. Uh, so some different assets. So we're just going to look through and I don't see a face expressions controller anywhere. Uh, I don't know about you. So what are we going to do? We're going to close out the asset library and we're actually going to have to open the template. So we're going to come up to file new project from template we can come down to face and we want to pick face expressions. All right. So the template has loaded. So what I recommend is just to use this project as the base for your lens so that you have this face expression stuff, or if you need to bring it into an existing project, um, you can actually uh, select, let's say we select this effects object. You can right click and you can export the object, go back to your other project and then import that exported object. And I'll bring in this whole uh, hierarchy here along with the scripts that you need. Uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and work in here. Uh, so the nice thing about the template is we have these kind of like um, expressions here, just kind of showing us which ones are being measured. So you can see this browse up center is um, around 0.1, it's not quite getting to zero, and then it goes up. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and import my skull object here. Um, the resource In the resources panel, just add new resource and from files. So my skull object is here. I'm just gonna open this up and find this little P object, and I'll drag this in, and I'll stick it under my head binding because this is where our character stuff is. All right, so here's my skull. It is quite large. So let's go ahead and scale this down really quick. Let's try 0.1. All right, so a little closer. Let's go ahead and go 0.07. Oh, we lost the lock. All right. So we can fine tune this in just a second. Let's get those facial expressions working. So here's this character expressions object. It says replace me. So there's a character face. Uh, we can just leave those eyes. Uh, so I'm going to select this and we can see we have this expressions controller face. So I'm going to click on this mesh component and I'm going to look for my skull. So here's a skull, here's the mesh. And if I select it, now you can see that the face is moving with the person. So let's go ahead and get rid of this other character face. And then the eyes are here. Uh, you can keep them if you want, or you can create your own. Um, there are some scripts here to copy the rotation. Uh, you basically just need to change this target object to whatever your eyeball object is. Um, I don't want to use them for this lens, so I'll just delete these two eyes just to clean this up. Now with my skull, I can now just adjust this. And you can see that the facial expressions are working. So the eyebrows have got some movement there. The mouth is opening and we can change this preview to someone else. And we can see it is also working for their face. All right, so now some problems you might have, uh, maybe your facial expressions aren't actually working. So make sure the script is active. Make sure you have your mesh component selected. 
Um, you can come into advanced, make sure you have the face mesh selected. Now, if we disable the face mesh, so right here it says do not remove, if that's disabled, then we lose the facial expressions. And if it's on a different layer, Oh, it look, it's like it is still working. Uh, sometimes that can cause issues too, though. That's depending on if uh, the cameras are set up correctly. Um, at least I've seen that in the past. So we'll just keep on layer. The key is to have a transparent material so that your face mesh is in the scene, but not visible. All right, so back to the character expressions. You can also come in and customize. So maybe in your 3D software, you named jaw open, uh, maybe you added a space there or just named it open jaw. You can come in here and you can adjust the name. So if your jaw open has a different name, you can turn this on and you can select the uh, correct jaw open name. And then you can also adjust the scale if you need to be a little stronger. So if we bump the scale up, you can see that our blend shape is moving a little differently. Let's try to find the value here. So you can see our jaw open is going from about zero and hers only goes up to 0.4. So you can adjust the scale to try to get that open even more based off of um, her jaw open value. Now these aren't um, great to rely on. Uh, so I would recommend coming back to your model and adjusting the blend shapes if you need um, a little more motion or less. So the key thing here is to make sure that your blend shapes are named correctly. And then also before we do any of that, uh, you can also come here, select your mesh and make sure that the blend shapes are showing up here um, and that you can kind of adjust them yourself if you need to. So if you adjust it yourself, you should see it moving over here. And that's a good way to check to make sure that your blend shapes are working. Now, if not, maybe you didn't set it up or maybe there's an issue with the export like that subdivision surface modifier. All right, so the last step, uh, I see lots of people publish these types of lenses with this uh, expressions debugger here. Please turn that off. No one wants that in their lens. So just turn that off. Uh, you can delete it if you want. And then you are good to go to keep building your lens or just publish it as is.